Good Friday evening, everybody. It's 10 o'clock Eastern Time, and looking across the United States here on this very high-resolution image, uh, looking across uh, much of North America, here's the Great Lakes up here, a swirl of afternoon clouds. And then as we head out west into this, this is smoke from the fires in the Pacific Northwest that's moving through. This image is actually a couple of days old, but it's just a perfect image that I thought I would show it, and you can see from the edge, the thickness of the atmosphere, not much there, but this is what we have for our planet and what's going on there. We can scan over a little bit and take a little closer look uh, at the Atlantic and also move it on down and guess what we have to see. There it is. That's Irma. This is as it was approaching Puerto Rico and a couple of days ago. It's now right here over Cuba, uh, but again, I wanted to show you this. Uh, just an incredible picture when it shows a solid eye there and again how big it is this is three times the size Andrew ever was and that was a big storm that hit Florida uh, back many years ago and just behind it now up to category four storm as well is Jose and Jose has made it at this far and that's where we're at and while we're at it let's take a look over in the Gulf of Mexico and there's Keisha I think that's how you say it and it is now down in the Gulf of Mexico and again category two Two Category 4 storms, very active in the Atlantic. Uh, I don't recall ever seeing anything like this uh, before, but we'll see how it continues to go with the rest of the hurricane season. we got to go through November yet before it usually winds down and is over. Let's take a look at the water vapor image, and you can see how Irma is sliding its way, and just the latest image here coming in, and this is over the last 24 hours now just to the northeast of Cuba, and it is still heading to the west-northwest, and starting to curve a little bit maybe more towards the northwest and reason being let's take a look at the visible image and we can see looking off to the northwest we have more moisture in the upper part and the middle part of the atmosphere as well as at the surface I'm going to show you something here that is pretty amazing and that's why we're expecting Irma to head northward elsewhere across the country very calm and quiet over much of the eastern US had a few showers and thunderstorms in the northeast and again across the western US and again, those forest fires in Oregon spreading all that smoke into parts of the northern Rockies. And just very bad news for those folks out there. But had some thunderstorms moving into southern California, even in the desert down there, uh, the Death Valley area, getting some thunderstorms today. Let's look at that surface map and see what we have going on. Well, once again, big high pressure over the Great Lakes. And here comes our hurricane, this deep low right here down over the corner. Winds already out of the east-northeast across much of Florida. Temperatures there this afternoon well into the 80s. Very hot. And the big point here is it's very muggy. Dew points up there, 79. Oh my, oh my. Dew points in the middle and upper 70s. 79 in Florida Keys and Key West. Tampa Bay also 79. This is why I think with this converging moisture here on the west coast that it's going to turn more this way. It may even not make it onto the coast of Florida. I really think she's going to head this way and come up the west coast of Florida and then across the Florida Panhandle. She may even intensify there if she goes far enough off sea and hits the Panhandle of Florida sometime on Sunday is the way I'm thinking. I'm thinking and leaning this way at this point. Again, it's Friday night here and coming up, it's just after 10 o'clock Eastern time and that's what I'm leaning at this point. Let's see if I got some support in the models and we're looking at, the, again, the GFS model here and here we take it out 12 hours moving through northern Cuba and sure enough, it's staying south along the Cuba coast at this point. This is on into Saturday evening, and as we continue on into Sunday morning, there it is. It hooks northward, nails Key West, and heads on up towards the west coast of Florida. And again, I think it's going to be a, this trend is going to continue. I really think it's going to stay off the coast, and really it's going to bombard Florida, especially west Florida, with very high winds because that's in the northeast, and if it stays far enough off the coast, it could strengthen again. It will continue to be an F4 before making landfall again somewhere up here along the Mississippi and Florida Panhandle Coast. That's my take on the way things are shaping. It could even be further west, and I would not rule out a hit on New Orleans at this point yet. Not out of the question, but we'll have to see how things play out uh, with this. Again, the model saying it's going to go up into Atlanta and Georgia, and then next week wipe out and basically just dissipate, getting a little bit of precipitation perhaps moving up across the northeast and east coast as it moves out, but staying quiet after it sort of just weakens and falls apart, and then we start a change in the weather pattern.
But again, I'm meteorologist Jay Searles. This is a look at Hurricane Irma. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I wish everybody, and if you know folks down there in Florida, again, especially the Florida Keys, get out. Just head north and get out of there. And I, even in Miami, places like that, if you've been asked to evacuate, I, I just the track of the storm is still too unknown at this point. Exactly where it's going to be going. I wouldn't be taking any chances. If I lived in Florida, I'd be heading to Georgia or even South Carolina at this point. Uh, that's where we're at. Thanks again, and I wish everybody good safety down there. And if you have relatives, uh, tell them I have send my best to them as well. Thanks, and have a good night.